Hello, everybody. It is always a banger in North America. And as the LCS reduces down to eight teams, so must the ACL. We are bringing in another round of elimination matches in with week number three of the Aegis Champions League playoffs. My name is Gordo. I'm joined back with TDS after a little bit of time away. Welcome back, my friend, as we've got Keep Pathing Bot taking on CCG Esports for a spot in top eight. I paid the fact that I missed some of the matches that were looking so exciting, but yeah, it's going to be a good week. This time around, we have the Keep Pathing Pod against CCG. Also, the fact... I, I didn't even notice, I didn't even knew that it was going to be the elimination for Top 8, so quite ironical with the LCS news, <laughs> but... Uh, it, Thanks, I've been cooking that one for about 15 yeah. minutes here. Yeah. <laughs> Worked out kind of perfectly, sadly, for a lot of the fans, but it's okay. They are going to stay there in the LCS. We are going to stay here in the a in the ACL, and we're going to find ways to keep on bringing the LC the League of Legends experience to everyone in the North American sphere or ecosystem, whatever the word is in English, because I forgot. But the important part is today's matches, which is looking really great. It's kind of exciting and really could go all the way as we have had multiple times in the stream because we do know how to select good matches. And this one is looking like that as well. That's true. Although this matchup has historically been one of our few misses, TDS. We did stream oh. Keep Pathing Bot up against CCG back in week number three. Now, I wasn't there. So I, I shed my hands of some of this responsibility, although I do think I voted for the matchup, even though I wasn't here. Uh, but you guys Slayer? streamed it. You and Slayer streamed it yeah. back in week number three. It was a 2-0 for Keep Pathing Bot at the time. But a lot has changed since then. These teams have had a lot more time to play with each other, uh, to get experience with the coaches. CCG Esports uh, have not undergone any roster changes, but Keep Pathing Bot certainly have, uh, as they have swapped on over. We'll bring my camera back here in a second. You guys can still hear me. They've got Mabud and Kizno in top and jungle now. I know they had Shockey for a while on this squad uh, and yep. had another jungler for a bit as well. But this time around, it is going to be Mabud, Kizno conveying Sajed and Kenji coming on in to try to defend their Aegis Champions League lives. They did suffer a rough loss in the upper bracket to Team Fish Taco last week. But worth also calling out, they were running winking in the bot lane over Sajed for that match. Exactly. Taking pretty much their star player out in that situation, and we don't know what the situation was at the moment, but without Syed, you kind of lose the meaning of their name, which is Keep Pathing Bot. It's focused True. down there in a the bot lane. Syed has been a great performer. We have been able to watch him over in the AG Supernova combined over the weekend, perform amazingly well, really consistent AD carry, has good laning prowess, but particularly the team fighting from Syed has been amazing. I think that it's one of the key points for Keep Pathing Bot to try and keep on performing as great as they can. Obviously, last week, they faced, again, probably one of the better teams, which is CFT, and that's why they fall down to this lower division, phasing against CCG Esports, which has a star-studded roster. Yeah, it definitely is a very exciting team. It's got a lot of the pieces of the lit esports roster that just qualified for the North American Champions League. It is Dragoon, Fnatic, Messages, Lunar, and Just... And they, you know, I've been, we'll, we'll call it sandbagging the regular season for a lot of the way through. Do come in as fourth seed out of this Devasi division. They did end with the exact same record as Keep Pathing Bot, though. Both of them five and two. CCG had a 10 and four game record. Keep Pathing Bot at an 11 and four game record. Uh, the losses for CCG to Keep Pathing Bot and Winthrop. Keep Pathing Bot also losing to Winthrop, but losing to Mirage Alliance Developmental as well. So, 
they got a little bit of history between each other. They were brawling up against the same competition. And all in all, despite the keep pathing bot 2-0, they showed pretty similar stuff up against the exact same field. Exactly. They have a really consistent idea they want to try and play with. The problem is that they didn't have the consistent roster to play with in a lot of the part. So now they are trying to make themselves be a bit more consistent in their attempt, trying to just set themselves up for success with how they want to play. I can see them being not only a much more consistent team, but try to showcase the prowess that we were expecting from this roster, the potential that we wanted to see from CCG. Yes, they got into the lower bracket really early on, losing against pitch cuts, but it was against pitch cuts. Like, that's a team we were expecting to be really high up in the bracket. So the fact that they lost against them is nothing to be ashamed of, and this is the opportunity to try and turn around their situation with the fact that we're already going into draft and a lot of really crucial meta picks already banned away, but also trying to throw a little bit of focus towards side down there in the bot lane or towards, uh, sorry, towards Jaws down there in the bot lane with the ban coming in from the bane. Yeah, that's definitely an interesting one that they are going to look to take Jeez. away some options from a Lunar and now going to be jungle focus coming on through the keep pathing bot. Uh, top laner, Mabud, going to take an Olaf ban in there as well. So that's an interesting Respect. one to check out. CCG, the other thing worth calling out about this squad is they are now the reigning Risen Champions League champs. They did just take a title in that league a couple of weeks ago as they rounded out earlier than the ACL, winning that over their sister team, CCG Futures, who have now already been eliminated here in the Aegis Champions League. Yep. So some real tough competition up against them coming up here the rest of the bracket including this keep pathing bot squad that they'll have to go through to even see another matchup here going to be that first pick Cassante left unbanned and going to be snatched up by dragoon it's going to be the Cassante pick, but this comes from the focus of the AD carry bans that KPB had in their ban phase, which is really weird. And we typically see the Cassante being the first ban coming through. Now there's a good opportunity for CCG to make the most out of the Cassante, and it's going to be on a really good carry oriented top laner. It's actually scary that you give the opportunity for Dragoon to try and make the most out of a champion like the Kisante, but it's going to be fun seeing how they perform with it. On the other side, answering with the rail, with potentially the Ash, and if this goes through, there obviously there's going to be a bit lesser champions on there in the bot lane that you can try and pilot, but the Sai is still alive, the Caitlyn as well to try and contest with the range if you really want to, even the bearers for early pressure could still be options that CCG look for, and maybe trying to go for the bot lane pairing as well to try and answer. Yeah, and the Keep Pathing bot roster, they have super high rel priority, especially. Yep. They have played that champion in every single playoffs game they've played so far to make success. It was really big in their 2-0 win over Mirage Alliance. It was also what they picked both games in the 2-0 loss up against Team Fish Taco. So going to be running that one back here is CCG. They get themselves a hell of a rotation with the Zaya Rakan duo to face off against the Ash Rel. I think there's a fair bit of question you could ask there about KPB and the lack of prio they take towards that duo that both goes over to CCG. Now hovering the Renata, that would push the Rel into jungle for Kizno, and it looks like that is what they are going to go for. So Kenji going to be bringing out his Renata as the counter pick to the Rakan in game number one. Where the Anava not against the Renata here, really good to try and push back some of the engage potential with the ultimate. Also, they do have the range advantage, so they can try and put pressure onto the Sire Rakan early on. I was thinking maybe Keep Pathing Bot plays with the Ash Flex instead of send, uh, playing with the Ash potentially in the AD carry position. They just flex her to the support, and then you have double ranged AD carries in the bot lane, but it's instead going to be the more traditional approach coming in from KPB. As we see the second round of bans, more focus is going to be thrown towards the jungle since pretty much Jarell is confirming the jungle for KPB that means that you want to take away from anything CCG can draft then the Kindred probably maybe Sejuani or Maokai going to be the next band or even something towards more of the carry performance with the Biego and the Grapes also available if you want to take away carry junglers Absolutely here as the Darius Kindred bands coming on across Syndra going to be banned away as well we are going to be on the lookout for potential focus towards the top lane here from CCG. They've got that Cassante locked down. They know where they want to send him. Keep pathing bots still without a solo laner to their names. The other thing CCG could do is try to see if they want to get a little bit of advance notice on the jungle pool. Take away one of those safe blinds, the Maokai, something that is still up and available. A lot of folks still with a high priority on that pick. They aren't into the new patch quite, quite yet here, so... 
everything's still going to be as it was over the weekend. We were witnessing uh, a lot of those combine games there, TBS. That it's going to be the Glen Band just taking away options from Mabud to try to counterpick this Cassante. And the one that we saw against the Cassante a, a bit more frequently felt like it was the Jax, and they are trying to play around with it. I think the Orn fits a bit good in the idea of trying to play with the team fighting composition since it does give you a lot of the CC that the Orn does provide, but the Jax is a much straightforward pick in terms of trying to have a, a carry that you can confide on to try and play the game because the ash is not a hyper carry she's a good consistent damage dealing 80 carry but you're lacking the physical damage to try and have an in an actual carry and i think that Jax is the one that will fade into that bill that being said it can be a, a bit of a 50 50 matchup maybe 60 40 in favor of the jacks but it's really important to see how key kpb plays around this jacks or if they are able to take away attention from the top lane and give the jacks the free window to try and rain up during the top lane as maokai gets picked we were kind of expecting a ban to come through but with no ban it's going to be the pick here and then maybe something like the picture could end up being the option or something a bit more aggressive we've seen the akali the silas the gray the the yone being the options and it's instead going to be the J. so a lot of physical damage coming in from ccg yeah, going to be really reliant on that Maokai to represent some of the magical damage for them there. Might see something like the Roa build that we saw out of Alorum last week uh, that maybe try to amp up that AP damage just a little bit. Either way, the poke going to be very powerful. I love Maokai Jace as a duo, even though that does index you really heavily into physical damage for this CCG composition. Now hovering around here, what they are going to take into the mid lane, keep pathing bot, looking potentially for a rumble mid lane for conveying. That's actually been a pick that Messages was going okay. for a little bit more on CCG. Going to get snagged away by keep pathing bot here. Is conveying going to look to pilot that up against the Jace? Yeah, not fully really against the decision here. We haven't seen a lot of flex potential with the Rumble, but I like the fact that they are taking a champion that is really strong in the top lane and playing it against a matchup that you can play in the top lane, but in the mid lane as well. So they are going to try and win it off really effectively in the mid lane, try and put a lot of pressure in there, keep the lanes controlled, and then open up more space for the rail. Also, the Jace doesn't have necessarily a lot of escape tools, so if you're able to get on top of him with the Rumble and the rail, you can try and 100 to 0 him pretty quickly and then at level six the equalizer moving from top to bot or in the mid lane even in, in some place can be really good to try and win team fights or set up for skirmishes really like the idea to play around with it and maybe they can find consistent value out of the pick if they are able to play really well yeah and uh immediately starting on off there we do end up seeing all right well so here's some interesting news i'm looking at the draft law right now and the draft oh. law says that keep pathing bot were on the blue side <laughs> so somebody has some explaining to do here. Uh, we may have been calling those drafts for the opposite teams. That would yep. put messages in the Rumble mid. That is his pick more than it's conveying. Makes more pick. sense. Yeah. So we'll. Yeah. Okay. So All right. Production. Production is, production is confessed to their error. It is keep pathing bot on the blue CCG oh, on the good. red. Luckily, we have not done too much player specific analysis here, TDS. So I think. The, the wide swaths of what we've been talking about remain largely correct. Yeah. And I, I think the fact that we kept talking about how, uh, you know, this these really felt like they were compositions for the opposite teams. But, you know, maybe yeah. that validates that we know what we're talking about just a little bit. Exactly. It feels much logical to see the compositions in this direction because now it makes sense why they banned double lady carries against Syed. That actually it justifies does. the that, being that really that checks out, then. you know, it's, it makes it, it sense actually that Kabang isn't just stealing messages' pocket rumble yeah. mid out of nowhere. Uh, you know, make <laughs> a bunch of big fan of the Cassante. Yeah, exactly. Everything works out there much better. So at the very least, this does fit a bit more into the narrative because I was I was actually going to bring this up looking at the bot lane matchup, particularly uh, trying to hype up more about our, our AD carries. Sajid so is more of the hyper carry kind of player, whereas Lunar does like to be more of the team player. Like he can play carries, normal carries, don't get me wrong. But I think that putting him in this sort of more supportive AD carry duty like the Ash, like Jin, that can provide more value for Dragoon and messages is probably better for CG and that's why they opted into the Ash plus having that Renata value that you can play with just as well so overall much more consistent composition from CCG for the idea that I see them in and then for KPB as well makes a lot of sense for what they'd like to play with
Yeah, absolutely here. It makes a whole bunch of sense given what we've gotten to see out of both of these teams. Now, the Ash Prio was decently high for both of these teams, uh, but getting it away from Keep Pathing Bot for CCG certainly makes a fair bit of sense, as does snagging away that Rel that has been a favorite for Kenji all play long. He is going to be yep. on that Rakan this time around, doing alongside Sajed's Zaya, and now going to be really focused around that very powerful two-on-two -two duo, and that fits the uh, Keep Pathing Bot namesake, I think, a whole bunch more. Yeah, it focuses a lot more towards trying to make Sayad be as strong as possible, something that we want to see, because the Keep Pathing Bot name is not only for show, like, it legitimately means what it is. It's try and put Sayad in a spot where he can hyper-carry the team. Go bot lane, give him kills, give him push, give him open space, try and play the game, and you can have an AD carry that can deliver the game for you. So, makes a lot of sense that they want to go for a composition that will kind of ignore top lane, leave them on their island, but still be volleyball enough later on and then the rest of the team focuses on that bot lane focuses on trying to provide Syed with the early kills or the gold to try and become that hyper carry as well as looking a bit into the mid lane because we were talking about how this is a mid lane matchup with top lane champions but it can really snowball in a direction where you can put a lot of influence towards the bot side because of how much damage the poke from the Jace can be and then also the equalizer and the flame spitter value from the rumble. So if they are able to get as any sort of a small leads, any sort of a good push that you can transform into a roam with your jungler can turn into a really big play bot lane and that can tip the scales really quickly for one side. Yeah, it, it really, really can if they can manage to get one of those snowballs going for themselves. Meanwhile, in CCG, I do think there's some snowball potential up on their top side of the map as well. If you can get Dragoon yep. an advantage on something like his Jax, he loves to be able to play these kind of split push focused top laners in favorable matchups. He has clearly decided that he thinks this is going to be a good matchup for Cassante. I just a whole nother thing that now makes a whole bunch more sense is that uh, Dragoon is the one tanking Darius fans and not the Bud. Uh, I think that also yeah. just a fun. Yeah. Yeah, Dragoon yep. tanking Darius and Olaf and Gwen bans. That makes a <laughs> little bit more sense than Babud tanking all of those. Uh, and yeah, it, it, he still is going to end up with a powerful split push carry one way or the other. This time around, it's going to end up being yeah. the Jax. He likes that matchup of the Cassante. We've seen plenty of Cassante players be able to navigate this, uh, or, or sorry, seen plenty of Jax players be able to navigate this Cassante matchup, develop a lead for themselves, maybe even pick up a kill in the one-on-one, -on -one, especially in those kind of early pre-six levels before he gets too tanky and set themselves up for success coming into the later game. And the fact that we're going to be able to get really early on a Cassante versus Jax matchup also kind of sets up a really interesting narrative moving forward because it can mean the difference between having to forcefully ban the Cassante on the red side or being able to have tools to answer back on it and opening up the space for other bands to come through, right? Because this is the first game you're a bit more willing to open up bands like the Cassante. Maybe something like Yuriana could end up going into that area as well. But if this becomes a big threat in the later games, uh, because in this game you just completely stomped on everyone then the next drafts are going to be much more interesting you have to think more about what picks are you going to leave open on the red side and then what are you willing to give up for the the blue team to try and first pick here so i want to see how the dynamic evolves and if my bot can apply the pressure that we typically get to see from my kisanta pick yeah, you are really going to be uh, looking out for what is going to happen on this top side. I think Mabud, uh, a player that I love to watch, I'm happy to see him in the ACL. Uh, you know, the, this yeah. team was running a different top laner for a while. It was Shockey in here for most of the earlier season. Uh, do really like Mabud. He hasn't been playing on the Winthrop team lately since they got Denethor as the starter up there. Yeah. Um, but he's shown some really impressive stuff to me here uh, since his... Uh, since his time uh, that we've last seen him play, and I'm going to be very excited to see what he's going to be able to give us here in the Aegis Champions League. Keep having bot as a whole, I think, have, have really come together over these last couple of weeks. They really have solidified around this identity of playing through Sujet, of enabling their bot lane to carry. And I think Lunar and Just, that would be the duo that you would have the most questions about if you're looking at a CCG roster, yeah. right? A very powerful top side that they've brought in together, an NACL qualified top side plus Fnatic, who has so much veterancy and experience and is kind of a two-way player coach, really, given how he's spent some of the last couple of splits in that coaching role. 
role. Uh, Lunar and Just, they're the less experienced of that set. They're the ones that you could look to punish. Should make for a really exciting matchup today. We are ready to get out of the rift for game number one. So let's get on in as Keep Pathing Bot takes on CCG Esports for the first time tonight. And it's looking like both of these teams maybe would like to try and set themselves up really early on for the pace, something that we don't typically see, although there's some teams that do like to go for the level ones. I don't think if either of the teams is really going to look forward to it. CG just setting up for one side. Actually, they will have vision on one side, but they are playing with their jungler on the other. Wait, is it actually a bait? Ooh, oh, this is for great. Gizno. They're going to find him. A big Bramble smash onto three and attempted flash yeah, away, slowed. but slowed down by the Electro Harpoons. It's <laughs> looking like CCG are about to get away with first blood. Lunar going to get that bonus gold and now conveying. Going to have to be worried in his own Ooh. right. Just with the flash handshake, going to blow that summoner out of conveying as well. That was a beautiful setup. Trickster is just going to get some damage here, but full huge, 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 huge props to how CCG played that. That was so beautifully beautifully prepped, and it worked out amazingly well for them as just getting engaged here, but I'm not sure if they actually win this. Ooh, great damage out of Sajet. He's chasing him down with that movement speed, going to be able to pick up a kill for himself. And now Kenji going to have to flash over the wall, but Lunar has got the flash in turn. A second kill to the Ash comes through at 1 minute 30 seconds into the game. Lunar already 2-0. The bot lanes are so accelerated. Talk about a bloody start to the game, and it all starts in the level one. This is what we always bring up, Gordo. The level one is important. If you can play around it really well, you can find really good advantages, and it's exactly what CCG is able to find. Yes, they did blow a couple of summoners here and there, actually blowing, I think, three summoners, uh, not taking anything away from Zayed, but it doesn't matter because they find so much value thanks to that play, and now the Ash, when she backs to base, she's going to be quite far ahead from Zayed side down there in the bot lane. Nice dodge by messages there in the mid lane on that shock blast, but just going to find himself a knockdown up. And ooh, look at my bud's health bar already taken very low by Dragoon off the back yep. of some nice early trades. Dragoon ticks that level two first and makes sure that my bud knows about it. Going to be a big advantage for him up at the top side. And they're going to need that as this Zaya Rakan duo looks to already be taking the fight to Lunar and just on the bottom side of the map. And they are trying to make their lanes be as difficult as possible with Kizno also waiting down here, maybe trying to set up a play. Lunar has the flash, so he actually can end up dying here if he's not careful enough. They may be smelling something from the side of KPB down here, and it's not going to turn into anything. Lunar and Just just have enough range that it doesn't really matter. Yeah, the additional range that that Ash has with the volley just makes her so safe in that bottom lane and means that Kizno can't really find himself much of anything. He's going to take the recall, and get right back out out of the map. Oh, look, all right, Fnatic moving around towards mid lane, trying to see if he can find himself a little bit of gameplay of his own. The push up from messages going to result in kind of the same deal. There's not too many opportunities to be found for him quite yet. The Lunar getting a nice trade here on to Kenji. Forcing out a bit of the dash, so trying to force really heavily on the carries. They are getting pushed, but it's not like they are suffering quite a lot than they're in the bot lane. And with the kill lead that Lunar does have, it's not going to matter that much because as soon as the back comes through, Lunar is just going to be in a pretty comfortable spot. As we see the force in the mid lane, teleport has to be used by campaign. And there's no ignite coming in from messages. I'm kind of disappointed. Oh. Ooh, Lunar getting engaged on the bailout is coming on through. He is going to have to try to turn this one He's back around onto Kenji, kill. but he burns down too fast. Shut down for Sajed as he moves forward onto Justin. Just just has to get out of there. That's the issue of not having the flash. Lunar doesn't respect the range from the Rakan, from the Saya, and ends up paying the price with his life. He may come back into the lane with a bit of, the, of an item lead, or maybe the item is actually not going to have an special lead because uh, Sayed has a 2 oak lead as well. Like He actually has two kills. So it is better for the Saya down during the ball lane, and this is going to be the start of what we like to see from KPB, playing for the AD carry. And I haven't gotten a second to talk about it yet, but Fnatic did successfully steal away the blue buff over on the other side of the map. He had the backup from Dragoon to enable that. Does have himself a little bit of a CS lead and was able to get the triple buff start compared to Kizno. Down now to make sure that he's going to be able to secure himself one of the scuttlers. 
Nice recall coming on through from Dragoon. Not going to get interrupted. He is really happy with how this lane has been going and is going to be able to come back with the Sheen. Yeah, pretty much going to be able to exert even more pressure onto the Kisanti up there in the top lane. Babad hasn't had the easiest of times up there, but it's not like it's going to be possible for him to turn around the situation, especially when he reaches level 6. As we see, maybe a potential bot lane play. Kisno has flash, but it's just getting immediately disrupted by Just. Just has been playing the Renata quite well, enabling a lot of the movements that you want to see from Lunar, but it's not like we've seen a lot of action happening in general from either jungle. It feels like they've covering lanes but not really finding the ganks yeah no and i mean and that's why you've got to really look towards what fanatic's been able to do which is snag away yeah. camps and develop a lead in the one-on-one -on -one to see who's been winning out on this matchup and until kizno manages to influence a lane or get a lead to somebody other than himself that's really going to be the only metric we have to judge these junglers on Fnatic coming on down towards that bottom side as well. Uh, Just making sure to clear out vision and now has a nice path up towards mid where Conveying is going to have to play very carefully. He seems to realize something might be up and is trying to back out off. Quickly, by the way, the trade we saw top lane, Mabar forced the flash out of the Dragoon. So now the Jax has no flash up there. Could be a target for a gank if they are looking for an aggressive play obviously a jacks at level six is going to become a bit more difficult to try and make a gank work out onto but it's interesting that the more trades we see the better it's becoming for my bot the fact that he's been able to find more opportunities now that he's at level six and he can force a skill onto the jacks really effectively yeah Vang low on mana here, but getting a nice chunk on the messages as well. That rumble gonna likely have to recall soon, but here's a visit from Fnatic coming on in from behind, knowing that Conveying doesn't have access to that mana. Conveying gonna be forced to flash out to safety in order to stay alive. Yeah, flash for nothing over there, thanks to the gang from Fnatic. He also gets his flash back. That means that there's a potential re-gang opportunity down there in the mid lane. And now my bot getting engaged and actually ulti used. Yeah, has to try to come on in for the fight Ooh, there. Dragoon going to be able to force Mabud out. And meanwhile, a cleanse blown from Sajed in the bottom lane in response to both summoners from Just. So another win for the keep pathing bot duo. You know, Kisno's doing what the name says. He's pathing bot. He hasn't been able to pull yeah. off a gank, but he at the very least has exerted some pressure there and is making sure that Sajed and Kenji can have it their way with a nice 2v2. It's just trying to materialize the movement from Kizno into a gang. But so far, it feels like as long as he just keeps them covered and doesn't give an opportunity for Fnatic to come in for a gang, then it's going to work out for them because they are not losing out in any trades. They actually even have a farm lead over to Saya as well as, I think, a plate collected for the Saya. So overall, the gold body is just much higher on Sayed. And with now the first item completed, this can be one of the opportunities where they can try and look for an aggressive play, especially with the move around on the map. They are moving already the sign of the Rakan up there in the top lane, maybe for the Herald. A juicy trade here for Dragoon as he dodges out on the stun. He could look for the solo kill here, and he's going to get it. A solo bolo to Dragoon right as that Rift Herald spawns. But the bot lane is here to respond to him. He's going to get pushed back, but a total numbers advantage to CCG means they should be able to secure this Rift Herald if they want it. And already with the Ash also backing means that they will have the numbers advantage. There's no teleport on Mabad. He did come back to, uh, alive. And now he may try and move around into into the play up during the top side. But it doesn't feel like they are actually looking for it. Oh, Kameng! A beautiful enchanted crystal arrow. He's not moving for a while as Messages picks up the kill. CCG, big plays in top and mid. Talk about a perfect setup up in the mid lane with the Ash Arrow coming in from downtown and just getting the perfect positioning to try and control the kill. Really good kill for Messages, already getting on the scoreboard as the Rumble and also opens up the play for the bot lane. They know that they don't have any control up there in the top side and that means that they can immediately move for a play in the bot lane for the Dragon. Messages taking a bit of damage, but he's not backing away at all. Yeah. Has to give a little bit of respect to Kasante, especially after he gets stunned by the Pathmaker, but will be just fine. Continues up with his farm. Kizno now starting on up the Rift Herald. CCG choosing to focus towards the Dragon after they get that successful kill in mid lane is going to open up for this trade, and it looks like Kizno is going to be able to get it unimpeded. 
Yeah, it's not looking like they are going to try and contest. And I feel like that's the correct decision. There's not much that you can accomplish up there. You already got the dragon and that's really what matters. And there's just they're just going to try and trade around a bit of gold in the meanwhile as well. Message is getting traded on, but it's not going to be the worst part. I feel like the worst part is this. Giving up so much gold for Saya. Like they are not stopping the Saya at all from gaining such an important advantage. And she's going to get even more gold. She's already 4.4k and now she's going to get at the very least close to 4.7. And look, it might be the top side of the map, but it's still pathing towards your bot lane. Yeah, Keep pathing good. bot. Continue to enable Sajed. He's coming out of the base here with a Kraken Slayer and the Berserker's Greaves already. Feeling so powerful as that Enchanted Crystal Arrow connects. Magnet Storm back in. They're going all in on the conveying the full dive from Fnatic. And what a call from Fnatic to flash back over the wall. I don't think conveying intended to take that to the skies. He ends up away from the turret and goes down to Lunar. Yeah, makes it so that they are able to pull away the... Oh, Lunar, you're dead. Oh, Lunar, you're dead anyway. <laughs> yeah, no, he's not getting out of this one. That's going to be a kill to Sajed. That has to be one of the most like positive thinking flashes I've ever seen. Thinking that even with your flash, you're going to run a Rakan ultimate. That, it's kind of sad to see. It is a little bit. But going to be three kills to each carry. But Sajed certainly sitting prettier out of the two. Been able to get himself another plate coming on through in just a moment here. Going to be now potentially looking for a dive on to just. It's going to be the knockup from Kenji, the full combo, but the hostile takeover. Okay. Going to connect on to both of them. Good damage on a Trickster. Off the bag of a couple Sajed autos, but the follow-up not quite there yet. Lunar's got no summoners. He's got no <laughs> ultimate, and he cannot support from that far away. Fnatic in much the same situation. It's not going to turn into a lot of value, sadly, for the side of CCG with that ultimate by the Renata, but they still, at the very least, don't lose a lot of gold or a lot of lives after what happened to Lunar. They are losing quite a bit oh. of pressure. Oh, Trickster. Okay, Kenji's fine. But, though, he's getting ulted on and even flashed on by Dragoon. Ooh, nice unstoppable there from Mabud. Gonna be able to pull Dragoon out underneath the turret. Multiple shots come through, and Mabud with there. a counter solo kill oh, no. takes down Dragoon in the top lane. Now, full combo coming through onto Lunar. He's sent down to the wrong side of the map. Gets bailed out by the Renata, but will drop to Sajed a second time. 4 0 for Sajed in the bottom lane. And even though the gold is not really far away from each other, it is still looking so poised for the side of KPB. They are finding kill after kill in multiple places in the map. Mabod making or making the plays like you kind of expect from a Kisante. And now you also have the Saya. 4-0 right now with a BF sword already completed. This is such a strong champion at this point in the game and she still can get stronger. Like she's going to keep on getting stronger, way stronger than Yash, but she's already poised to do that. Uh, it's a Sajed carry angle. We talked about this all weekend on the EG versus Supernova. Uh, what did we call it? The, uh, the, the combine clash. Okay where that team was so set up to play around Sajed in team fights to give him as much gold as possible and just execute in such a way that he's able to get himself into a position to deal maximum damage. That's exactly how he wants to play. That's exactly how Keep Pathing Bot wants to play. And they are in such a good position to do it in this game. Number one, Messages taking a rough trade there up against Kenbei and going to be sent to just a sliver of HP. And he's going to get engaged on once again, conveying, taking such a good trade onto the Rumble. But at the end, it's just messages trying to push a wave and back away as soon as he can. Trying to set up maybe potentially for the next Dragon fight, which is coming up in 30 seconds. He doesn't have teleport, so this could be a bit scary if he's not careful enough. But it looks like they are going to get enough opportunity to come back into the Dragon. Uh, okay, that's good. Ooh, Kenji Ooh, wait, messages. sees messages, though, going to throw down that quickness to try to keep him in place. Messages heading for the hills, has access to the flash and the equalizer, but he's got no backup. He's going to flash oh, away from the shock blast. That might be the last bit of distance, but the knockup from enough. Trickster, not Trickster, Kenji. You got to change your name back, man, as there's going to be the engage from Kizuna <laughs> on the bottom side. Just pushed out of position. He goes down to Sajet as well. Lunar responds with the Enchanted Crystal Arrow, sends back the volleys shutdown. and picks up the shutdown. Now moving forward on to Kizno. Lunar! Popping off in the one versus two, going to drop to the sapling though, and Kizno takes him out. 
the pain from the Aster, the fact that there's Vision Denial onto Lunar could have been a double kill, ends up being a one for two at the end with Kizno surviving, and now Dragoon actually getting collapsed on as well. It's a three beat one, actually three beat two now with the, the messages coming in. Where's the equalizer? He's held on to it, going to layer it down into that tri brush as a full Didn't engage from Fnatic is going to whiff Dragoon, leading the charge on the conveying underneath the turret, going to be able to pick up that kill as here comes Mabud to try to avenge his comrade. They're going to bring over Kenji as well. Here comes just off of the top side. It's going to be a three versus four, maybe even more as Keep Pathing Bot is sending some additional members over and both parties will disengage. Yeah, they are able to run away. Nobody gets collapsed on after they are able to kill Kambang. And the game is going to be tit for tat so consistently. Eight to seven in kills. The gold just as lightly in favor of the side of KPB. But I feel like the important part is where the gold is allocated, right? Because you look at who has the most gold on the side of KPB. It's a yeah. He has the item completed close to his second item. But then you look at the rest of the map. There's no mythic completed on the Jays just yet. The Kisante has one item, but it's also kind of equal to the Jack, so there's not much difference and then same in the jungle you can look at the total plate gold here so much has been secured for keep pathing bot and most of that's gone right into Jed's pockets as well tds like you said he is the most wealthy person on the map and that's exactly yep. how keep pathing bot likes it they are going to look to start on up the dragon here look to equalize it one to one and with lunar recalling i just don't think they're actually going to be able to contest this we'll go on over to keep pathing bot well, in all honesty, after getting the first dragon, probably not needed to try and contest the second one. It's going to be the Infernal Soul, so both teams probably want to try and get it as much as possible. Who gets it is another story, but at the very least, it creates good dynamics looking into the dragon fight. As we see, both teams just trying to push the lead a little bit, try and get more control over the map, and take down important turrets. The only one that has fallen at this point in the game is the top lane, or the top lane turrets, both of them. Ooh, Fnatic with a huge flank angle going to land the Magnet Storm onto two. There's the Chain CC. The Equalizer's a little bit late, but Hostile Takeover going to find its way out of Kizno. Damage. Kizno's going to burn down to the coffee from Messages. Sajed, though, looking to make a response. Doesn't quite get the snare on the Messages and now has four members looking to collapse Lunar in onto it. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, Lunar going to flash away from the two of the skies, looking for another outplay in the one-on-one, -on -one, but conveying, able to create enough distance and get away from the Ash. Almost Luna are looking for the play there, but conveying is way too fast, and also there's not enough range on the Ash. She didn't even have ulti, if I'm not wrong, so barely able to find a good opportunity there in that situation. But they do get the kill onto Kisno. They had control over the Herald, but they are going to just dissuade away from it, not actually fight around it. And this is going to turn just into a one for nothing in general, and try and see what you're able to get all around the map after that kill. Not going to be a big objective, but at the very least, gold is gold, and you value that. Oh, wait, engage. Gold is gold, and Message is looking to escape. He's got the bailout on him, but it's not even going to end up proct. Just now leading the charge Slow. forward on to Sajed. Is there a punish angle? Fnatic is approaching, but he's going to back away. Nature's Grasp comes on across from Kizno. Both parties will disengage once again. Eight to eight on the scoreboard. Only about 500 gold separates these two teams. A very close one so far, TDS. Yeah, but not gonna lie, I'm not against the play of trying to utilize the nature strap in that, uh, grasp in that position, particularly because there was no flash on the Ash. So that's one of the most best opportunities to try and col collapse into a target that barely has any mobility. But it does fail, they don't find the angle, and Lunar escapes with his life really comfortably. They get the Rift Herald, and we need to wait and see what CCG utilizes it for. More times than less, we see it just trying to bait out for the next Dragon fight, but I don't think it's going to be the case in, in the next opportunity, as Dragoon maybe gank here. Ooh, and Tofo strikes connect out of Dragoon, and he finds himself at a one versus two, going to commit the ultimate for the additional defensive stats and see if he can kite Shadow. his way out of this. Enchanted Crystal Arrow from Lunar, not going to connect. All out, thrown so down from a bud. But Dragoon likes this fight, turning it back with he get messages in with the TP. But now they're going to look for the knockback up. They're going to pull it back in with the Tofo strikes as well. Throwing down the equalizer as Babud burns down to the damage. <laughs> will just barely be able to walk his way back out of there and will manage to stay alive. Meanwhile, CCG, they get a numbers advantage on the other half of the map, and they pick themselves up a turret with it as Conveying is looking in for the collapse. Looks like they will have to give up on the play there. 
Yeah, they were trying to look for another potential objective and this is what we're talking about with using the Rift Herald, trying to make the most out of the immediate objectives that you can get. Usually we see it with the Dragon up, but with the Dragon taking way too long, this is probably the most immediate objective they can try and get and trying to open up the map as much as possible. Get some more vision down, get a control over the Dragon Pit, over the Dragon River so that you can set up for your team and then look into trying to get a pick with that vision. That's kind of what I'm expecting to see CCG set up for. And I'm of two minds about this, TDS. On the one hand, CCG have not yet put together the, like, rumble combos that they've been looking for. When they get the Rel engages or the big Renata engages, it's always been with messages a little bit too far away, so they haven't gotten those kind of wombo combo team fights. You can see that as a weakness, but you can also see that as a danger oh. for future fights with Keep Pathing Bot, because once these land, this game might get a lot less close, but they're targeting messages in the bottom lane instead, and the full combo going to connect. Messages now, trying to burn Burn down Sajed will end up going down too fast as it's trying to finish off the no, job no, from no, Fnatic, but Fnatic getting kited on back. A dodge away from the hostile takeover from Kizno will keep him from turning on his allies. It's kiting back now with Sajed, but he doesn't underestimate the damage coming on through from CCG. A double kill for Lunar as they turn it back around. Dragoon now on the flank, looking to hold down two remaining members, diving underneath the turret and focusing on towards Kidbang. He can tank up this turret all day long, TDS. He he will not stop chasing conveying across the map until he drops and CCG are just finishing off cleaning up the fight. <laughs> Getting the kill onto Justin. Now oh, it comes no. like he's into the can clean up. But Bud's going to try to do the same thing that CCG was trying to do, except he's on his side of the map. He's going to be able to take down Fnatic over on the other side, pulling I'm him further away from the team and claiming another one for keep pathing bot. But the important part here comes in from the timing that this happens because now the dragon is going to go free for the side of Kid Pathing Bot. As we see how the initial play started, Message is trying to escape, but he deals way too much damage here to Zayed. I think that he doesn't have the ultimate. That's exactly why at the end it almost doesn't work out. And then the collapse from Fnatic a tad bit later. If they can combo this together, they probably kill Zayed much, much quicker. But then the persecution here, trying to find a lot of targets. I don't know why Syed thinks that he can go for the kill into Fnatic because he steps super forward, gets stunned, and then just enables the rest of the team from CCG to follow up on the play. This was played really well from both sides in my opinion because Kambang was trying his darkness to try and survive, but then Dragoon just gets the ultimate in a really good spot and survives for really, really long. And then Kenji just takes out three members pretty much by himself because of how they tanked the turret. Lunar ends up tanking too many turret shots, just is in a really weird spot, and then because of the stopwatch, they are able to position themselves once again in a spot where Kenji just has to wait for Mabot to come in and clean up. Yeah, really well done by Kenji there. He buys so much time underneath the turret, diving and ducking around until he is able to get himself out of there and ends up securing basically two kills on his own. One of those do go over to him, the other one going into yeah. a bud's pocket where it's going to have a whole lot more value. And again, it stops CCG from really being able to capitalize off of the fight win. We now stay dead even in kills and pretty close in gold as a result. We keep having bot of the one who ends up securing dragon number four or three. Now, this is such a good game, though, because the gold is so close that no one really has had a clear advantage at this point in the game. Like, everyone really can just go tit for tat, and that still doesn't mean that anything will go into either way way too heavily. The only real difference is the fact that Saya is the strongest member on KPB and that they got one more dragon. That's about it, because gold-wise, it's pretty equal on both sides. It has been very, very close in gold as the Baron now on the map control over to keep pathing bot are they going to be willing to start it up it's good for them to have control over this objective early i will say kizno going to be able to land some poke in addition to conveying and that might just be what they're trying to do here they have so many wards on this side of the map in every conceivable entrance and angle they're just trying to look to whittle away at the ccg health bars anytime ccg tries to approach they even have wards inside of the players' houses to see what they are doing. They have way too much vision set up inside of the jungle and you will know what is happening near the Baron Pit. And I like the fact that they are doing this when there's nothing else to play for in a map, realistically. Turrets are already down on the side lane, so you don't need to put way too much pressure there. The problem, the probable next objective will be that mid lane turret, which means that you kind of have a lot of control already in the areas that matter. And then the Baron, which 
CG has a lot of Baron damage, by the way. They have an Ash, a Rumble, and a Jax. Those three champions melt Baron. So trying to take as much control in that area as possible is going to be the difference between a Baron getting sneaked away and you being able to fight it. Yep. It slowed down a couple of moments, though. CCG have really called Keep Pathing Bot's bluff here, despite all the vision control, despite CCG not really knowing what's going on on that side of the map. Ooh, they have yet starting. to really step in until now, where Keep Pathing Bot start off the Baron, and CCG now are actually forced to respond. It's at half HP, and Dragoon not even moving yet. This would be a four versus five, but Keep Pathing Bot are going to back away. They don't want to risk a 50-50 with Fnatic's Rel. The Baron will respawn back up to half HP, and I think CCG are pretty satisfied with that as they can keep on pushing in the bottom side. Yeah, the biggest factor here is that KPB didn't force a teleport from Raccoon. That means that they are not actually finding any sort of angle or worth play after starting the Baron. The Baron is not a bad call to go for if you're able to bait out something of meaning, but they didn't in the previous play. Now they will know it's getting started again. Lunar did back, so this is actually one of the perfect timings for them to try and rush it as much as possible. They even can't with see. They don't know what's going on. They throw down the equalizer blind. Fnatic flashes over the wall. Not going to be able to steal the Baron. It goes over to keep bathing bot. But Sajed is so low. He's going to burn down to messages as messages turns back on towards conveying. Two members already down. Keep bathing bot. Have to conserve whatever Baron buffs they can get. But there won't be one on conveying as messages hunts him down. Three kills to CCG and all the objectives they can take with those death timers. Baron buff on two. There will be two Baron Bobs still enabled unless Mabot and Trix and Kenji step too far forward. They are trying to go into the players and actually Lunar dealing quite a good amount of damage, but it's not going to be enough to end up getting the kill. And in honesty, I'm not against the play. I actually think that they played it off in the right timing because it was when Lunar backed and then the rest of the members didn't actually have vision like you were pointing out. We had the vision toggle here before. It was completely blind for Fnatic, even though he jumped in in a perfect timing. But the problem here is how the damage is down for multiple members. So Yed and the Maokai are melted by the Rumble Ultimate. Perfect position by messages, by the way. And then the Renata ulti clips multiple targets as we see live Maokai is dying, actually. Yeah, Kizno nope. caught on out messages, picking them off once again as now Teleport being channeled by Dragoon. He wants to keep this fight going. Lunar looking to slow down whoever he can find with the volley as Sajed <laughs> has Dragoon right on top of him. Lunar going to finish oh, off the no. on the other side and CCG have found their fight. Pulled back in is Mabud as he is looking to take down Lunar, but the bailout's going to be available here before too long. Lunar <laughs> is bailed out and stays alive. It's a five for zero ace for CCG. And they are pushing into the mid lane. They are taking down the structures. It's 20 seconds for the carries and eight seconds for Kizno. I think this is game, Gordo. It's going to be enough. Kizno just starting to respawn now. He's got the nature's grasp, but he's going to have to pop it right away. The cat's going to do their best to defend the base, but it's too late. There's no chance to save this Nexus. Kizno going to drop for the 20th kill to CCG. And CCG strike first blood in this series. And it's going to be enough for CCG to try and close it out in a game that, in all honesty, was tit for tat. Nobody was truly controlling the game until it went to CCG's side. Both teams could really try and get a hold of control of the game, but it felt like one fight misstep was really going to be the difference maker, and that's exactly what happened with the Baron Bob. And I want to stress this. I wow. think that the Baron play is not bad. Yeah, it's the clip at the end of the game. It's really just what happened after that Baron Bob that it completely tipped the balance of the game. But I want to make it clear, like, I think the Baron play is not bad. Like, legitimately think that that idea and the moment that they pulled it up was really smart because it was playing with the numbers advantage in favor. But the Rumble Ultimate plus the fact that they didn't account for the Renata on the side just really made it impossible. And I think Sayed should just completely run away as soon as they see the Baron or the members running into them. They have to run away. And they didn't really opt into that at that point and that is what ends up messing up a lot of the situation and what the game completely goes out of control. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you there, TDS. Is, it was really a very tough decision that had to be made in an instant there for Sajed, where yeah. they choose to try to burn down the Baron, 
to be able to secure it for themselves, and they do manage to do that. But in order to burn it down, they need Sajed to just stand still and keep autoing. He uses that time on top of the Rumble ultimate to try to get that last bit of damage through. And I mean, if he doesn't do that, then they have to abandon the Baron and it goes over to CCG for free. But because he does, he dies, Kizno dies, Conveying dies, and they just lose so much control around the map, and it's a guaranteed yep. loss from there. It was a really difficult decision at that point, and I think obviously there's going to be reviews and watching the bot where, where they can try and correct that, but I think that the idea of trying to go aggressive in that play should stay. Because I feel like that's the right, the the small differences that really make the greater teams is knowing when to take those sort of really risky plays, but make the most out of them. And I feel I feel like the idea from KPB should be recognized is more so the execution that if you change just a couple of tiny things can end up battering so much. But then talking about the other side, CCG punishing really well the play, and also I want to talk about the way that they play the overall game because they started with a four and zero Ashen bot lane. But it never really felt like it was going to get out of control because gold-wise, they were always close. The other side of the map was finding pressure and they were finding picks even if it meant Lunar wasn't going to be the start of the game, which he's playing gosh. It, it doesn't really matter if he's not the start of the game. As long as he's doing his job, everything is going to turn out fine. And that's exactly what CCG did. So huge props to them in how they managed out multiple situations in the game. Yeah, I completely agree with you there, TDS. It really ends up with uh, a very close game that ends up being slammed open by CCG in those yeah. last couple of fights. And that's going to make the question of, are they going to try to make some changes coming into draft for game number two, or will keep pathing bot track it down to just a couple of small mechanical or mistake in play to be able to come back and try to win another couple of games in this series. We're not done yet. We got at least one more game here tonight. It is a best of three with both of these teams lives on the line. We're going to throw a two quick break while we get into draft for game number two. But we're going to be back before too long as keep pathing and bot attempts to stay alive in the Aegis Champions League.
Welcome back, everybody, to the Aegis Champions League, where we are gearing up for game number two between Keep Pathing Bot and CCG Esports. CCG drawing first blood in this series are now one win away from both reclaiming some pride from their loss to Keep Pathing Bot in the regular season and from, more importantly, moving on and securing top eight in the Aegis Champions League. Yeah, I would argue the biggest prize here is probably not having to lose your, your spot just yet in the ACL and actually be able to keep on competing. But the pride part does matter to a certain degree. As we're seeing the pick and ban, the bans fly through, and it's the same bans for both of the teams in the previous game, with the Kaysante coming in as the first pick as well. And because of how the game went, I can't understand why CG didn't ban away the Kaysante. This is something we talked about in the first draft that happened in the second one. How much is the Kaysante going to scare you? that you don't pick it again and it seems like absolutely nothing because it's going to be ccg living it open and then opting into the rel and the ash again are we seeing a salty run back if it's sayra can into renata if it, no actually into yeah renata would be the salty run back but they opt into different things wukong and syndra uh, uh, now i like the options i like the change not gonna lie oh yeah you can't can't hate on the change one bit but We'll have to see if that's what ends up making the big difference for conveying here. And then the addition of that Wukong, you know, it's been a big pairing with the Orianna throughout recent patches, but I have no issues with it just being picked straight up on its own. Still think it's a very good engage option. It's still really good in those team fights, but now an opportunity to maybe put a little bit more priority on their Cassante counter pick. Dragoon is going to take that Gwen before it can get banned away in the second phase of bans. Interesting that it comes in so early, but in the previous game, was it wasn't it it was it Darius when the two bands that came through Darius Gwen were the band, KPB? Yeah. yeah, so it makes sense that actually we see the Gwen coming in here with the band, and now you focus on Tabal lane more because CCG just went in for the two bands onto the Bane and the Jinx in the previous game, but left open the Saya, which was immediately picked. But since you're picking the other champs, you just ban bot lane now. Take so yet complete comfort as much as possible. Like you can ban the Saya Barris here, Saya Caitlyn, and now you have to deep to dig deeper into Soyet's champion pool to try and find a carry that he can perform on. On the other side, I'm expecting to see a bit of support focus, much more so than mid lane. Maybe a Silas, actually. Yeah, I could definitely see that coming on through, trying to pinch out what messages is bringing to the table. You could even ban away that Rumble again because you are looking at the Rel Ash still, who are still going to be very good. You called the yep. Silas ban, though. That one comes on through. Do CCG want to take away Rakan? That's also an option. They could also pick Rakan for themselves mm -hmm. and lean even further into a Rumble composition. Those are options for them, too. Currently hovering that Ophelios, a very good late-game carry for Sajed if he's able to get it. Do they value it that highly to be able to take it off the board? Is Sujed, he'll go for other stuff. He's a big Kaisa player. I'm sure he'd be happy yeah. to play Kaisa in this kind of matchup. He's played some Vayne. He's played some Jinx. Jinx is already banned. Vayne is already banned. Uh, but, you know, he, he can really dip deeper into that pool if he's forced to. We saw him play some Sivir over the weekend. That one's still around. Could be a variety of different champions here. And maybe a lot more, a little bit more focus towards messages in the mid lane as well if the Caliban does come through. But I'm surprised the little focus we've had over Barris, honestly, so far this series. A champion that feels like jumped back into stardom for a, for a bit of time, and then people have still not put a lot of pressure into feels like. But overall, you do have to. If you have the champion in your consideration to a certain degree, as we see the fourth pick for CCG coming through, potentially the LeBlanc, I would love another mid laner in all honesty, maybe the Yone, if you're not that comfortable taking out, uh, the other mid laners, but the LeBlanc feels a little bit weird at this point if you're going to opt into it. It's going to be the Talia, which I'm not like, mad against the Syndra. We saw yesterday Talia versus Syndra, and you can make a lot of good combos happen with the Talia. Especially when you have access to so much other CC, like this Ash and this Rel. Yep. So yeah, I'm not mad at it at all. As that Rel is still going to remain a flex pick, there's really kind of a three-way flex at play here. Because there's still a world where Rel <laughs> goes support, Talia goes jungle, and then you could still lock a mid laner for messages last year. Uh, I, I assume it's going to be mid, and that the Rel is just the only active flex here. But we'll have to mm -hmm. see what they end up selecting. Saving that support counter pick to last can be very, very good here for CCG. You can even see something spicy like that Varus Ash bot lane combo come on across Pretty if somebody's well, yeah. feeling uh feeling like they want to impersonate carry it tonight. It's an option that they have available. The Sivir, though, going to be the lock-in for keep pathing bots. The Jed gonna be back on the carry. 
Now, what are they going to pair on up with it? Could see something like Emilio. A lot of folks have been favoring him with these kind of carries, although Sivir are usually not the one of choice. It's usually somebody Maybe with Nautilus. higher range. Could be just the Nautilus, could Ooh. be just the Alistair. Alistair's still a classic counter to the Rel with the interrupt yeah. potential, so they're just going to lock that in. It's mainly for that Rel, it feels like, although the follow-up with the Wukong from the Alistair, a bit equal, a bit lesser, but to a certain degree can be equal to the Rakan, as we're seeing the hover of the Nocturne potentially as the last pick, and we were talking about the potential flex with the Rel, it seems like maybe they were considering as well on the CCG side. I would love more to see the double-ranged bot lane, but if they want to have a much stronger jungle matchup, I can see them also opting into it with now the Lee Sin hover as well, and it's going to be the Lee Sin. so the 2v2 Twos between when Dali and Lizen are going to be extremely strong early on, but it also means that if you fall behind, there's really not that many outs for your team because late game wise, KPB has a much better composition. Yeah, definitely the case here. As I like to see what Key Pathing Bot have been able to put together here. If they can keep Sujed safe, I think it's going to be a really, really powerful team fighting composition that they've assembled for themselves here. The question, as always, when you're facing off against these sorts of matchups, is what about the side lane? Who's going to be able yeah. to deal with this Gwen, especially if Dragoon manages to get ahead early on? I've seen some real banger Gwen games out of Dragoon before, and he's got so much power to be able to really be able to be focused on up to put him ahead up against Bob but right talia can weaver's wall up there the lee sin gonna be looking for early ganks you could throw up an enchanted crystal arrow rel's gonna be roaming around bringing in gank power as well so you could just throw every single bit of your ccg composition at the bud to guarantee dragoon an advantage and then who deals with gwen in the side lane it's it's a very tough question to answer yeah and it's not only the win alone but the same thing always happens when you pick talia is that it's not going to be a 1v1. It's going to be a 2v1 potentially because of the Talia uh, Weaver's Wall opting into one of the sidelines and trying to help the win out if she's ever in trouble. So there's really good opportunities for CCG to try and dictate the pace of the game based off of what they can do on the sideline. And realistically, Syndra will never be the one answering the win. If Syndra goes into the win, she probably will die. It's may it mainly has to be the case, Ante. But he can lose out on some of the trades and more so than that, he can just not even be able to stop the win from taking down turrets. So the objective focus that for KPB this game feels like they have to play for the late game. They have to play for post 20 minutes, but they also have to focus on team fighting. Like, I don't think they can answer the the, the sideline pressure. So they have to focus on being able to find team fight angles for the Sivir and the Syndra to shine. Because if not, they are just going to open themselves up for too much pressure from the win. That's definitely the risk here, right, is how much pressure the Gwen is going to be putting on out, like we said. And additionally, you know, CCG, they were able to kind of rally around this Ash in the later game last time around, too. She's not a Sivir, right? She's not going to be able to solo carry the whole game on her own, but she is a substantial DPS threat if you're able to set up around her, if she's able to get to, like, three items, which is around the point that Lunar really started being able to pull off these kind of 1v2 plays later on in game number one. Kind of, yep. And yeah, it, it's you're going to hit that point eventually, right? Especially when you're up against Sivir Alistair, not the most lane dominant of duos. She's going to be able to get her farm. She's going to get her items eventually. So if Keep Pathing Bot wants to stick to a point where the Ash is you know, fully support moded, it's going to have to be early on in the game. And that's going to be tough to do when you're up against stuff like Lee Sin Talia that are going to be able to be really influential in these side lanes that are going to be want to be out and active in that early game. So CCG, I think, playing both fronts of the matchup quite well. Keep pathing bot, I think, really, really focused at this mid-gamey, team-fighty portion of the game. And they'll be really good in late game five on fives, but I just don't think CCG are going to give them too many of those. It's difficult to find those sort of situations, right? Because if you play too much for the late game in a situation, then you, do you forget about the early stages as well? Or do you try to just play equal until you reach that point, right? But will CCG give you that opportunity? They have champions that early on can just put so much pressure onto your team. You have lane dominance in the form of the Ash, where with her range, she can just really outrange multiple champions and then not really fall behind if she's careful enough. Then you have the Tali and the Listen that as a duo, they can be really deadly, especially if you're able to get the setup onto a Syndra, onto a Sivir. They are champions that will die really quickly and are able to get to just provide enough uh, value for the tally and the listen to just run the game over. And then you also have to consider then team fighting wise, APB's composition will suffer from one particular thing. And it's that their engage is a dash. 
guess what champion destroys dashes? Talia. So if that's going to be the case, like Messages has the opportunity to just mess up any sort of engage potential from KPB and then set up for the Gwen, for the Ash to play the prolonged team fights in a manner that they can just out damage KPB at the very least until a certain point. After four items, I can see Sivir just running everyone over. But before that, the game can really be comfortable for CCG because they have the champions and the setup to make it work the best possible. Yeah, a couple of things I will say, though, is, uh, first of all, On the Hunt, I think, really gives you some freedom to play around that that worked ground, That's right? True. Or the, the, what is it called? Unraveled Earth is the, the Talia E. I always uh, call it worked ground. I don't remember the worked name ground is like the <laughs> Worked ground is the name for when the ground is cracked and you get to throw oh, the big ruler right? with Q. Yeah, uh, okay. Yeah, so that's worked ground. Unraveled Earth is the little rocks that stop dashes. I don't anyway, remember this. <laughs> champion ability names aside, look, dude, I'm just gearing up for when the new champion comes out. I don't even remember what the name is right now, but that, so champ's got, for that champ's got 10 abilities plus the passive plus wash brush is like when you swap from form to form. Yep. I am, I'm like, I'm just going to have to like go into the tank all of Thanksgiving with my time <laughs> off work and just memorize those abilities that's that's what my weekend looks like but that point aside yep. on the hunt going to give you a lot of ability to kind of collapse in on these fights uh and really just kind of walk around unraveled earth if you have to uh to yep. still be able to find those engages the other thing is scatter the week from syndrome is like real long range like it, i think people don't really treat it like Especially the kind Max. of non-committal engage that something like a nature's grasp or a call the forge god is but it really is kind of in that category right it's just so free to be throwing down dark spheres and fishing with scatter of the week it'll land from really long range and if you hit it onto an ash or a gwen or a talia or at least sin that's an engage for you right there the rest of your team can go and follow up on that so I, I think even though you don't really consider it as such it's not what comes to mind when you're talking about engage i think keep having bot have a lot of capabilities to start fights even though ccg have some powerful disengage tools of their own you also could technically think of it as a tool to deny engages from happening because apart from the when which does have her missed to deny any sort of uh, abilities that come in that come from outside the grail and the least seen do have to come in front of you to make their engage work out and that's exactly what discarded we can try and stop from happening and working out and then you do set up for your team so i do agree there is tools i just think that if kpb plays too passively with the idea of mind that they do have later stage of, in a better spot that can be a bit detrimental for them and i'm also trying to think about what they can try and accomplish from laning phase alone because it feels like bottling wise they are going to the push ash just arranges them and then they don't have a lot of kill threat unless there's a big mistake for ccg feels like or wukong camps bot lane which we've seen kizno do so i wouldn't take it away that they do again but it, it's it's a lot of putting pressure down there as the jungler and ccg can try and play around that and then mid lane wise i don't think you out push talia early on either so now you have one lane that you can try and collapse on which is sub lane in a more in a really effective manner and if that doesn't work either for you because it got a counter pick then kizno maybe in a spot where he doesn't have control over the map at all and he barely can find plays and that's the part i'm scared about for kpb especially up against the lee sin as your jungle opposition right that's going to be a fight yeah. that fanatic can be looking for constantly and if he can get onto kizno he should be able to win that one-on-one -on, -one on a lot of stages of the game even the escape with the decoy isn't super reliable up against lee sin he's going to catch you with that tempest triple and he's going to look to chase you on down so definitely a lot of uh, a lot of danger there for the key pathing bot squad i think they're a little narrow in their game plan now that's not always a bad thing it's very straightforward how they can start fights you know it's a silver comp you just press r and win that's always been the meme so yeah. they can press r and they can win that way but it's just got to be noted right there's there's a lot of angles for ccg to play through here and keep pathing bot are going to have to be aware of all of them to make sure that they're going to be able to navigate through this game and execute the game plan the way they want to exactly and i want to bring up the fact that going into this game the previous we had such a hype or we were hyping up a lot of the matchup in bot lane because of what we saw from side in the over the weekend in the combine in the showcase i'm in and then playing the side to such a good degree trying to be the hyper carry that the team needed 
be that sort of player. And now, throwing a bit more towards the utility side. It still can hyper carry, don't get me wrong, because Sivir can go for those four items. But kind of thrown a bit to the side in the in the hyper carry setup or in the kind of shining star setup and trying to go toe to toe with more utility for the team to set everyone up which is kind of a, a different phase that we have seen from Syed all weekend long feels like completely agree there as i hear we are on to the rift in the background so let's get onto it for game number two keep pathing bot taking on ccg esports for the second time tonight a win for ccg will lock them top eight and will eliminate keep pathing bot kpb have got to fight their way back into this series if they want to stay in the acl And in the previous game, we had a marvelous level one, which sadly we didn't have enough opportunities to actually like look deep into it. But the idea was beautiful. This time around, it's not going to be a similar level one from them, but it's actually going to be KPB trying to look a bit more aggressive. I'm not sure if they spotted the Ash here though. I'm actually not sure if the, I don't think the Ash is ambition, so they don't know that the Ash is in that spot. And it's actually going to be them trying to just ping out the fact that there's multiple members down there. Does seem to be the case here. Just going to come into the bush, going to see where everybody is lurking around. Ooh. But message is getting a little bit collapsed on. Going to have flash. to use the flash at level one. Message is chunked on out. And without that summoner spell for the early game, you know where Kizno is going to be looking. Exactly. That's a really big summer to pull down, especially in a lane so volatile like mid lane, able to push away the, the Talia into that spot. And also messages didn't back, which means that he's going to be quite low compared to the to the Syndra and probably not going to be as aggressive as messages probably wants to try and be. He gets the push here, but he probably wants to back after this. Yeah, I think he will recall and teleport. I believe he's staying mid so they can keep sight on conveying and go for this invade. You see Fnatic already started on Has enemy control. blue and he's moving down to enemy wolves as well. So going to go for the three buff once again. He pulled it off in game number one and wants to do it in game number two. And it doesn't seem like Keep Pathing Bot are aware that this has happened. They don't know. It seems like just now Kisno or Kisno is going to maybe realize the fact that there's very quiet, a uh, very quiet situation up during the top side. And now Fnatic is just going to go back to his own jungle, going to steal three full jungle camps. Actually, this is a much harsher steal than we see typically from the junglers. And with this sort of control, I don't know what Kisno is going to try and do. Oh, quick flash. Might even be looking for the first blood here onto Mabud coming in from behind and knows that this Cassante is incredibly low and Dragoon going to be pulling in the wave. One more minion to die. The minions now tanking up the tower and here comes the dive attempt from Fnatic going to land that Q, Perfectly going to take gone. it in for first blood in a very clean early game performance from CCG. Next them the first kill of the game. And it seems like the realization that this was going to happen came through as soon as Kisno was just going inside of the enemy jungle because he saw the blue buff was still up. He saw that multiple comps were still up. So they probably thought that the leasing was going to be close to topside. And the setup works out perfectly there. The leasing collects the first blood as we see the dive potential here. No flash on the ash. Kisno attempting the same teleport being channeled by messages to come and try to turn this play around. Trickster. Lunar going to go down, but Trickster going to do the same. Now Kisno going to be the next target. This is actually Dragoon. It's not messages coming down to the play but that might be even more dangerous. Dragoon snipping his way across. Kizno survives until finally Just is able to take him down. And Dragoon getting it taken down by a flash dark sphere from conveying, but messages skateboarding down through the river. Going to be looking for that seismic shove back in. Catches out conveying and is ready to clean up the kill. It's going to go over to Fnatic, but they oh, donate it to gone. messages instead. Four to two on the scoreboard for CCG. They claim back two on the bottom side. Yeah, not gonna lie, I love that they give the kill there to messages because with his flash down, he needed to have something in his favor after what happened with Kameen getting a kill as well. So overall, huge value there for KPB. We will see soon in the replay how it ends up going, but I think that the idea of the dive is not necessarily bad. They know that they lost top lane play, they know that they need to respond in some way, and they also saw the teleport coming in from messages in the mid lane, so I assume they thought that nothing was going to collapse back into the bot lane. But uh, Kenji tanks way too 
too many turret shots, and then they end up forcing a little bit with Kisno in a really weird spot. The collapse from the rest of the members from CCG was really, really good, as well as Dragoon surviving for slightly more than they probably thought he was going to survive, but at the end, it just forces them into such a weird spot. They are way too overcommitted here, and now it's just perfect for messages to arrive to the play, force them into dying, and then also try and give the Ash the opportunity to push the wave. And the crazy thing there is it was so well mechanically executed by Keep Pathing Bot, and it still went sideways. The interrupt on the crash down was clutch from Kenji. Yeah, really the good. double stun on the scatter of the week, but none of it ends up mattering as Dragoon now is looking to take the fight to Kizno on his own. Going to force that monkey out of his own jungle as Fnatic comes in for the backup. Yeah, it feels like maybe in that bottling dive, the biggest issue that happened there is that they are not early game champions. If that was a dive made by Akalista, uh, Akalista, the uh, Alistair Wukong, I feel like that would have worked out a bit different in, in their favor, yeah. or Akalista, Silas, Wukong, right? Like, if it was this sort of champions, it probably feels much better. But because it's a Sivir Syndra, you're lacking slight bits of damage that could be the difference between you killing them before and you getting out alive as well. That's completely right. It's now grouping up around the top side once again. CCG, they collapse in the wave. They've got Fnatic there with the resonating strike. Connects it, looking for the kill. Tanking up the turret, gonna have to flash out to safety. Does manage to do so, but Mabud tanks through it all. Dragoon not tanking up tower yet, so he will be able to escape, but Mabud sustains through the dive and comes out with his life. Yeah, really good flash there to try and play around it. And Mabot is not as weak as they thought it was going to be, so they actually find such a good angle. Dragoon also didn't have the, enough mana to actually follow up on more damage on it, so it doesn't work out that greatly. But looking to try and punish top lane as much as possible and give Dragoon the edge. Definitely Dragoon. Really actually kind of losing out from all of the shenanigans in the early game. He doesn't pick up the first yeah. blood. He doesn't pick up a kill off the teleport to bot. And he does lose out on a lot of CS to Mabud for that TP. So not actually going to have a huge lead over where Mabud's at right now. They're trying to make it one there, but does not end up working out for them. And meanwhile, keep pathing bot. Having seen Fnatic on that top side, they feel comfortable to take the dragon. And the early dragon obtained by the side of KPB is a really nice objective to secure. We're talking about how they probably prefer to play around the fact that they are later game oriented. So getting this sort of dragon early doesn't really mean much in terms of stacking, but it does mean in terms of taking away the stacking potential from CCG, not allowing them to get towards the soul really early on and trying to force a fight where uh, KPB is not in the most advantageous position. So I like the, the way the fact that they do get that. And if they are able to get another dragon in their favor, they can run the clock at the very least in, with dragons in mind in their favor. Yeah, I agree. I think keep having bot. The fact that they get to delay the soul is huge for them. They are in a Syndra Sivir composition where they have fallen behind in the early game. You are now, I think, all in on that team fight plan. You're not going yeah. to be able to really shut down everybody early on and, and try to snowball away with a win. Conveying now, finding that out right here is that is going to be a connected Sonic Wave. Resonating Strike could be to kill. Messages has committed the Weaver's Wall, but Fnatic will not follow him in, and Conveying will escape with his life. But now Kenji has made a little visit towards the top side to try to net up a bud. A little bit of an easier time here, but Dragoon finds a big snip snip and snips away a fair bit of his health bar. Now Kenji's just got to worry about whether he's going to be able to get out of here. He will be able to escape, but now low health bars and exposed members for Keep Pathing Bot might lose them this round. Fnatic. Fnatic looking really aggressive there, but they know that they have the advantage this early on. They don't have the ultimate on Dragoon, which could end up turning around a bit of the situation, but now Fnatic is level six, so maybe they can fight this. Nice double knockup from Trickster, gonna get responded to by a big crash down Fnatic. from Just, as there's gonna be the all out from Mabud to finish off Fnatic, and Mabud feeling so strong on this Cassante, going to chase down Dragoon. the knockdown Dragoon and pick up a second kill for Keep Pathing Bot. Flash in from Conveying to outplay the seismic shove from Messages. Conveying looks for the kill, it's a oh, one for it. one in the mid lane. Both shots connect and both players are knocked to the ground. 
but I'm not sure if that's completely worth it because after what happened top lane, that means that now the game is a bit more inclined towards KPP. It's not the biggest deal or the biggest gold lead in their favor, but it does turn around a big situation that they were kind of in, and now they can really put themselves in a really good spot. They also are moving towards this Rift Herald. They have the numbers advantage because the Ash is currently in the ball lane, and this could just be an easy objective for them, getting even more gold potential thanks to the fact that they won the team fight. And honestly, I'm not even sure what happened up during the top lane. The control that they provided to just not allow Fnatic to do anything was so big there. But Lizzie also, he got level 6, but he barely was able to do anything at all. Yeah, it was held down by Kizno with the Cyclone, and I do think the fact that Dragoon didn't have access to Needlework ended up making a big difference yeah, there. Matter. He did not have access to the additional regen, he didn't have access to the additional damage, and great knockups chained in from Kenji and Kizno just end up keeping them down. Messages, though, with a big trade of his own. Going to look to kill Kenji Ooh. here. Kenji going to be forced to flash away as Kabang lands a couple of shots in response, but there's going to be the oh, Sonic Wave. There's going to be the jump back in and a kill to Fnatic, conveying, playing with fire and gets burned. Yeah, that was a really good pullback there by Messages, setting up the kill onto Kabang. No flash is a kill, and that's the sort of value that you get from this duel between Lizin and Natalia. I also think they could have gotten the kill onto Kenji, but it feels like Just didn't believe the damage from Natalia was going to be enough in that play. Escapes with a bit of his life, but still doesn't matter because they do get the bigger prize. That is this uh, this uh, Syndra in the mid lane, and maybe another one actually. Beautiful oh. footwork from Messages. <laughs> he dodges out on each. Each and every dark sphere, each and every throw from the W, and takes down conveying in the one on one. A message just wants to be the carry of this game. After that initial kill, ends up turning around two really good ones, and now conveying is in such an awful spot. He died twice, teleported in after the, after the first dead as well, which means that now he's going to lose out on a lot of the minions uh, that are dying to the turret, and doesn't have enough pressure to be able to move around for any potential play down here in the bot side, as the Rift Herald is going to crush, give gold to Syed, and set up for a potential play. Lots of shots connecting in the Sajed, though. He gets too hungry for the turret plates, and Lunar is just shooting him the whole time. Kizno now getting it cut off by the Weaver's Wall. Great positioning from Messages to give a double kill over to Lunar, and that's going to be a third dropping as Kenji is held down for a third kill to Fnatic. CCG wipe the bot side of the map clean. And that's all on the setup that came previously. That's the value off of the fact that you have the the push from the mid lane and the control from the mid lane. Ash Arrow coming through. Dragoon is by himself. He should be fine. Yeah, it's all on the it's scan of the now. week, which does not connect. So Dragoon will escape. He's got the teleport to come back to lane. The dragon going to end up going on over to Fnatic. CCG now up. Nearly 3k gold have found their lead back after a rough fight in the top side. Great punish onto Sujet in the bottom. They know that that's where the gold wants to go. It's right there in the team name, and they come up with a big punish for it. And yeah, they find really good value after that. They also even get the, the, the dragon in their favor, so actually finding really good value with that initial play. As we see how it started, Luna actually gets crashed, but it doesn't really matter. Sajet walks forward a second time in the hour, uh, once again in the series, has worked a bit too far forward, and ends up finding a really good engage by Jost. Kizno trying to make them escape, but this is what happened after the kill onto Kmei. Talia Bax comes back with a teleport with a perfect Weaver's Wall angle, stops the run away from Kizno, who doesn't have flash anymore, and it just sets up for two more kills in favor of CCG, and a lot more control in their favor. It's all a cascading effect after you find the initial play in your favor, as we see Kenji getting stopped and engaged on actually yeah kenji thought he had a cute little play there with that channeling hex flash but he gets spotted and stopped by just i'm going to have to back on away has access to the unbreakable will so he's too tanky to be worth actually chasing down they're just yeah, going to clear out the way. nothing it was just ulting in so in general terms it's actually advantage for KPB because they didn't use anything to try and escape, not even uh, Unbreakable Will. So overall, True. really weird that they don't try at the very least to force it. True, yeah. They had a lot of escape tools available with the On the Hunt and the uh, Unbreakable Will, but they don't end up using them. And 
Just gotta be backing away after clearing the wave is CCG. Enchanted Crystal Arrow coming, connects oh, on to conveying. That's such a long stun. So much CC coming through onto him. He's gonna flash away. He gets Sonic waved. Another kill to messages. CCG executing so well around this Ash pick and picking off the mid laner for the second game in a row. We honestly haven't talked much about the value of the Ash in general, but it's been so good so far as Quizno trying to collapse on them, but it's going to be an easy escape for the members. Uh, Messages is on Vision, so he probably has to be extra careful here, but it's not going to turn to match. But we have to talk a bit about Lunar's Ash, because in both games, he has had really good picks with the Ash Arrow from super long distance and set up for the team. And also, he has understand his role. Like, yes, he died a couple of times in the previous game during the bot lane, but it never turned into a huge 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 problem for the team he just waited out played his role and ended up becoming a really good supportive ad carry and he's doing the same here like he's just helping the team find value he doesn't need to do much more than that yeah that's absolutely true here and message is going to be the recipient of the gold once again four one and three on this talia going to be a big damage threat in his own right he has already shown plenty in the one-on-one -on -one up against conveying building himself up a huge advantage. And that's one of the big scaling carries that you're relying on for the later game team fights if you keep pathing bot. He's now died five times in this early game. Ooh, Conveying looking to get something back, but it's about to become six TDS. Conveying nowhere left to go. Fnatic takes him down again. Really painful for conveying there once again. He looked into the play. He actually thought that he could take the fight into messages enter after the flash came through. And I wouldn't say it, it couldn't be the case. Like legitimately, you can solo kill the Tali in that position as the Syndra. But if you are alone, you have to think about the fact that someone can be collapsing on you. And that's exactly what happened there with Fnatic. It does mean that they are going to lose the repair. And they technically also got a turret down there in the bot lane, which was the first turret gold. So Overall, it's not the worst trade that KPB could have looked into, but it's still conveying dying once again, which is kind of sad. Yeah, and I mean, when you're dead on the Sintra, you're not farming Splinters of Wrath, you're not farming gold either, so just going to continue to fall behind the pace of the game, especially when yeah. compared to messages. Big problem for them here. They're gonna try to make a play out of Dragoon now. The stun off the Pathmaker connects and they're gonna be able to commit everything, but Dragoon <laughs> just snips Mabud down where he stands. Kizno will flash in for the kill up against his former teammate, but it will be a one for one on that top side. Dragoon outplays it. Yeah, if I'm if I'm about there and not gonna lie, I also wouldn't have expected that to be a kill range for the Gwen. But it ends up working out massively for you. You now get another kill. Yes, you lose down on the turret, but the one for one in that situation, it's probably the best you can hope to get. As we see also the Rave Herald still pushing up there in the top side, which means that that probably is going to be another push into the turret. Hunt out from Trickster. Going to get him disengaged from Fnatic, but Fnatic lands another sonic wave and he can go right back in for it. The knockup going to be able to stop the play from going any further, but pushed out from this dragon are keep pathing bot oh, and another oh, cross map no. arrow finds its way onto Kizno. Look at this snipping damage oh, from Dragoon as Kizno's got nowhere left to go. Dragoon picks up another one. He almost escaped, which would have been really high for Kizno there. He ends up dying, but he did take two turrets in here in his favor. So gold-wise, I won't say it's that bad of a play. I still think that CCG is currently in the driving seat, but they are not pushing their gold lead farther than what it already was uh, previously. So the fact that KPB is keeping it as close as possible and knowing that they do have the much better late game composition thanks to having the same round as Steaver means that they can try and play around that really, really well. And like Syndra and Sivir are going to be huge damage dealers in the later game, but CCG, like thematically, they're so good at disengaging, they're so good at side laning that they might not give them the opportunity for those fair fights. That's what you have to worry about if you keep pathing bot, is they're gonna go with the engage here, but the stun from the unraveled earth, it's just too much. It stops Kenji in his tracks, and he's gonna be forced to retreat. And that's going to be one of the biggest difficulties for KPB this whole game. It's not getting stuck by the work ground from Tali and not giving her the opportunity to just stop the engage. Kenji feels it firsthand here. Luckily, he doesn't die, but that's still the reality that he probably will continue phase all game long. Yeah, very, very tough to be able to get past that as it is going to be so, so difficult to find those engages. Two dragons to one for CCG, a ways out from Seoul for either team. 
but still having difficulty breaking open these mid lane outer turrets are both teams which would really let you start setting up vision in the enemy team jungle which would really let you try to find those additional picks that both teams really want in this stage of the game keep pathing bot to get back into it and ccg because all well, the team fighting from keep pathing bots pretty dangerous even while they're behind you do want to try to take those unfair fights where you can Plenty of damage has been dealt to the turret for CCG, but they haven't been able to take it out quite yet. Yeah, so far it's always been the thing that neither team has really found the angle to maybe push through with a bit more, but it's also because the enemy team hasn't given them that angle. Like, you can try and force all you want, but if the enemy team is just in a better spot to answer back onto you, it doesn't really matter. As we see, maybe a collapse onto Joss, but he's playing well. He's really fine. He's quite tanky. Yeah, and Dragoon. Feeling very strong now with the Leeching Leer completed. Will be on that Rift Maker before too long, and that's going to be become the point where Mabud really does not have any good chances in this one on one. The Gwen going to be so dangerous in the side lane coming into the later and later game. Trickster goes back in for the re engage. He is just 1v3 for right now. Isno and Sajed not able to form up and back him up quite yet. And all that Trickster is going to get for that is a disengage with his life. And finally, that mid outer turret will be broken by CCG. Yeah, it finally turns into the mid lane turret. They were looking for that turret for so long, and they finally are able to find the angle to take it down. Will it matter in the long run? Maybe as the next dragon is spawning, they, this does give them a bit more control finally. And now they did move towards the top side, so this could actually cascade into multiple upper uh, into a good amount of gold finally going into the pockets of important members but it feels like it did take them quite a bit before they finally found that angle to try and push forward even more could be could be after all so fanatic clearing out his red buff pushing away any potential engage from keep pathing bot as they throw down some wards but will retreat back out of the jungle Get some recalls off. CCG as a whole go in for a big reset here. Getting those last couple of item spikes before a potential standoff at the Baron. CCG would certainly love to get a fight started on their oh, terms, messages. but it's not going to be that as Kizno finds messages, throws on down the Cyclone, wants to be able to finish off this kill, flashes in, but a beautiful stopwatch from messages will save him the death and give the kill over to Just. They get the kill, their message is able to flash away, and they actually also get the flash out of Kizno, which is a really good news. Yes, Joss gets the kill, but overall, you don't care who gets it as long as the message just gets out of that alive. Also, quick, funny, uh, like, fun moment there. So it actually gets clipped by the Ash Arrow, and they start pinging him question marks, because why did he get hit as a Zipper? <laughs> well, you know, he's he, he's got a moment there to be able to get caught by it safely. <laughs> he is going to have to learn his lesson real quick, though. If this happens in a more critical moment where he's getting yeah. collapsed on, he's going to need to be faster on that spell shield to make sure that he does not end up picked off himself. It's a reminder for himself to not fall victim to it. Everybody gets one. You get to make one mistake. And uh, there's Sujets for the game right there. If he uh, makes it at a more critical moment, it could <laughs> very much have an influence on the result. Yeah, it could turn out weirdly, but even though we saw the play previously, it's not going to turn into anything major because it, was, it wasn't it was an objective that was being played around with. As Kizno is coming from the back, I'm not sure if they know that Just is here. They should now. Yeah, they're going to find him there. There's yeah, going to be the full cool. CC chain landed on to Kizno, oh, and Kizno. Kizno is destroyed. Four members contributing towards that kill as Kenji has to head for the Hills Dragoon. Now brawling one versus two with Sajed and Mabud using that immune field to keep his distance from the Sivir's conveying is forced to flash over the wall from the collapse Ooh. of messages. And CCG maintain a tight grip around the top side of the map. Keep pathing bot, having no opportunities. And even though they kill the jungler, they decide that they don't want to go for the Baron. And honestly, I feel like that's the much better choice here. Because without the jungler, yes, it, it's safer to go opt into any objective. But the problem is that you're going against the Sivir Syndra. In short, in small spaces, those two champions will destroy you if you give them the opportunity to actually deal damage to you. And they committed a lot of ultimates to try and kill Kizno. There is still the Red ulti, yes, but the re-engage potential is kind of hard to actually pull off. So I feel like they play around the respect and the fact that KPB just needs one good team fight to turn around this game. So they just wait for their time later on and go for the Baron after that point. But I like the decision making that CCG went into after that play because sometimes you can just go completely crazy and lose the game out.
CCG appear to have a stranglehold on this game. They know where the keep pathing bot members are. They are constantly arriving to the plays faster and in greater numbers. Keep pathing bot are running out of options looking for these picks off of members like Kizno and Kenji. Oh, and messages. every time just getting stuffed as they're trying to find one on the messages here. The flash in from Kenji pushes messages out of position. Will this be successful? Is now showing two on the bottom side. Messages shoves them both back <laughs> and messages will skate out to safety. Hops on the rock and will surf his way out. Sajet is also looking for the collapse. Here comes the move through. He's going to be able to skate through with that Weaver's wall, but finds himself on the same side of the wall as Kenji, who's just looking to slow him down, popping that ultimate, pushed back by the seismic <laughs> shove. Messages is walking away from three members of Keep Pathing Bot while his team take the Baron. The, the first time, it's understandable if it doesn't work out, but the second, you have to find the kill some way, because he cannot just play around with you and then allow for your team, for the enemy team to get the Baron buff. Really nice there by messages, surprising that he doesn't die after the play, and now with Baron buff. This should be the opportunity that CCG was looking for, to not only try and push forward, but also try and break the base as hard as he can. Their ankles are shattered, TDS. Cape Banning Bot, <laughs> they, they're in the wrong zip code now as they are camping in the bush once again. They're going to find Just. They get some very good damage onto him. Back to Storm lands onto two. There's going to be the stasis from Just, but Sajed gets snipped to death by Dragoon. Dragoon's still at half HP, looking to carry through the rest of this fight. It's on conveying to be the damage dealer. He lands the stun, but Fnatic lands the kick. A double kill to CCG's jungler. Three members down for keep pathing bot and kizno is running for the hills yeah kizno is way too fast so it's not going to be the persecution to try and kill the jungler but they did the damage kills three members able to now move forward inside of the enemy territory take down multiple tier two servers and maybe one or two tier threes but look at this the play I, I, the play is not bad i want to emphasize this the play is not bad if it's one member but they don't know that there's three members coming in on the side and two of them are dragoon and fanatic if it's just a rel they kill them immediately if it's one of the two they can kill both of them but because it's multiple members that are clearly way stronger they just get completely collapsed and then kill as lunar is just kiting them out really really oh, well lunar how are you doing this to a man kiting out three members turning it back on the kids though one more volley would end it it's blocked by kenji in a hero play and there's a beautiful stasis from messages once again completely nullifies conveying's ultimate so jed's at half hp lunar is still here still feeling himself and ccg are just unstoppable yeah it's feeling like it's closer and closer to the point where there's barely anything that kpb can do there's now two items on the sliver so maybe they find a micro a miracle spot i can see them turning around the situation but it's looking really really difficult it's not going to be an easy affair and they have to hold on for dear life as much as they can they definitely do here completely running away with it in this game number two looking far more dominant than in game number one and you know it, it's looking like the post 26 minute game number one here tds where they just shattered it in a moment after having been so close for so long they are now over 8k in the lead and they are just one clean team fight away from breaking open this base oh no come back by the way the slowest is too much all right, Dragoon in a little bit of a one versus three now. Kenji going to be able to knock him back underneath the turret, but Dragoon thinks he can take this. One versus four, he's going in for Sajed. He chops down Sajed as well, taking down two for himself. Dragoon withstands four. Yeah, Kimbang is not having the game. He is really suffering so far and ends up dying once again. The life of a Syndra is not easy, even with Flash. And now it's a 3v4. They have the damage and the champions to try and take it down. And will they be able to finish the game? It feels like they can at the very least take down a turret.
Mabud's going to have to have a crazy all-out play here. That's the only chance that they've got without their carries, but Mabud's health bar is dropping oh, too he's dang he's quick. Going. He's going to hide out on the next message is taking a fair bit of turret shots. That might be the last little bit of safety that they need. The game will go on as Kavang has now respawned, but the odds are dipping lower and lower and lower for Keep Pathing Bot. They did kill the minion wave and that saves the game, but the game is still in a spot where you don't know what to expect. And now with Soul on the line or, or on the horizon, it feels like that will give them even an extra boom to try and finish off the game. Like, I cannot imagine how they are going to sub the Gwyn with Cloud Soul. She's just going to run all over your team. Like, she had a, a silver ultimate, pretty much. Yeah, she definitely does. Trying to prevent the soul here. Keep pathing about. Decide they are going to stage their fight here. They're walled oh, off no. by the Weaver's Wall, though. The soul will go on down. Kizno trying to head out. Dragoon is in on the flank. Dragoon has chopped down Sajed as Kizno is left over on the other side. Messages is on a rampage as he's managed to take down Conveying Fanatic. Going to be it's going still. dominating as he takes down Kizno as well. Only two members left for Keep Pathing Bot. Mabud going to have to stage a miracle going all out, but getting all done as CC. CG will clean this up five for zero. They will get their revenge for the regular season matchup. They will destroy Keep Pathing Bot 2 0 and eliminate them from ACL contention. And my bot may want to go all out, but it's the same if you end up in the gray screen. It's not going to matter because KPB, they are going to be put in the gray screen as well. The season was looking great for them, but sadly, only one team survives after this, and it's going to be CCG is staying alive. This was the Hail Mary play, but realistically, it was so difficult for them to try and turn around the situation. They find Syed, and as soon as they kill the AD carry, the all star AD carry, they go for the rest of the members it's really difficult for kpb to be able to play this out and huge props to ccg they managed the game out perfectly they knew their win conditions and they played really well around them huge props to messages as well absolutely here super well played by both solo laners out of ccg today and throw the seeding out the window, TDS. The seed four <laughs> from Demacia takes it down at the seed three in the lower bracket. They will lock in top eight. And it is going to be that uh, yep. ninth through 12th place finish for a keep pathing bot. We will say goodbye to them tonight. They are out of 2023 fall ACL contention. Yeah, it's really unlucky that we have to see such a good team like KPB out, but that's the destiny of competition you always are going to see this sort of results happening and you still have to commend them from how for how they play all season long they ended up being really high up in the standings they qualify for playoffs they play really close games against teams that are really difficult like they lost against ccg and tft there's no shame in losing against such teams so the fact that they are able to try and, and test their metal against so the caliber of players that we have here and force them into such a tough spot because the game too went out of control after one point, but they had really good opportunities early on. Same for first game. If they don't die in that Baron Bob, maybe we have a game three as an area right now. So it's just situations that could have changed a lot of the outcome of this series. And I think that KPB has to go out with their hell, hell high. Not that I already feel, feel super proud or happy, but at the very least, head held high that they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with many good players absolutely we are looking to get somebody in for a post-match interview here in a couple of minutes but to continue to break this one down yeah ccg coming back at a big time in this playoffs so i gotta i do have to say you're right about them losing to high caliber teams for keep pathing bot no shame in those defeats here and the two over mirage alliance definitely something to put their hats yeah. on as well very very impressive stuff from them but as we get deeper and deeper in these playoffs all of the teams are going to get really really dangerous and it's gonna eventually eliminate all but one ccg though i think really having had a relatively rough regular season at least compared to the pedigree of the players on yep. this team, I, I think are really turning it up for playoffs. I mean, their loss to Peach Cats was still one to two. They managed to take a game off the Peach Cats, who who many folks are uh, are ranking up there with the top top echelon of teams exactly. in the ACL. Really impressive stuff there to be able to get that win, uh, and then a dominant two zero over Harrisburg last week as well to get themselves into today's match. Now going to be in top eight 
they will play against the winner of Mirage Alliance Developmental and Clown Gaming when we do come back after our little Thanksgiving break. That will be on December 1st. Yeah, still had matchup. Two underdogs, pretty much dark horses that not a lot of people saw coming up so high and going to be is still a really top opening. Like, you cannot take away anything from either of those two teams. Either who qualifies is going to be a top matchup for CCG. But just quickly talking about them, right? The fact that I think that the, the regular season, not want to say sandbagging or anything like that, but they were still trying to set themselves up. It's a still the regular season and you want to qualify, but you don't need to show all your cards there. You just need to get to the to the next part of the season and that's where you truly begin to shine which I feel like CCG is finding their groove finally putting themselves out there in a spot where we were expecting to see them uh, later on kind of similar to Fear actually where Fear started also kind of weird but they were able to qualify and that's all that matters because now they are playing in, in the playoffs and as long as CCG finds their groove and are able to play at the level that we were expecting it should be completely fine yeah, now we do have messages in the waiting room, so we're going to throw into a quick break while we get the stream set up for his interview. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes with the victorious CCG messages. Welcome back, everybody, to the Aegis Champions League, where we are joined by the victorious messages. Messages, congratulations. You guys have locked in a top eight in the Aegis Champions League. Woo. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, really impressive stuff here today. You guys take them down two to zero. You played against a, a very similar keep pathing bot roster in the regular season where it was a 2 0 win on stream as well for keep pathing bot. Uh, I think there were some roster changes since then for keep pathing bot. They had Shockey at the time. Uh, what do you guys feel like has, has really changed there? Do you think it's more about keep pathing bot having the different roster or do you think you guys have, have really changed how you're playing as a team uh, since the regular season into now? Uh, I think we probably just changed a lot as a team. Um, even though that we did lose against, um, I, I believe, is it cats, something cats, uh, Peach cats. uh you lost against Peach yeah. cats in the upper bracket. We lost yeah. against Peach cats, uh, even with the, when them having subs, we uh, actually felt like we learned a lot from that series. Mm -hmm. Uh, we kind of learned what we wanted to play, how we wanted to play, what we wanted to do. And, uh, kind of felt like our synergy was like, uh, all in the right form and uh, i think we're in pretty good form for the the next couple of games that we have to play up until hopefully we go into finals so yeah and there's going to be a lot of teams that a lot of strong teams that you will more than likely have to face in that path towards the finals potentially even pitch cats if they fall back down into the lower bracket but i'm kind of curious looking back at that series against pitch cats was the expectation that you guys were going to win, like within the team, were you guys expecting to win against them, or was one was that one one of the matchups where you probably thought it could go 50-50 either way, even if it wasn't like the most consistent you felt as a roster? Um, we definitely knew that we could beat them. Uh, I mean, obviously, if they had their really their main roster, not like their subs that just randomly joshed in, um, then it would have been a lot harder of a series, but. I definitely do think that regardless of who they had playing, I, I think we knew that we could beat them. Um, and taking a game off them, uh, subs or not subs, like we were very happy about. So, uh, and it kind of just shows that our level of growth from 
getting 2 0'd by these guys and then um, before, and then now we 2 0'd them, and then we also took a game off them. So I think it just shows our growth as a team. Good stuff. Good stuff. Talk, speaking of taking a game off of these guys, uh, you and Dragoon were teammates with a lot of these guys throughout a lot of this past season uh, with, with both Kizno and Sajed uh, over on Lit Esports. Uh, does that does that make this match mean anything additional for you guys? Is that going to be bragging rights coming into the next season at all if you guys uh, are staying together over on the Lit squad? Yeah, so uh, actually I was, on, I was just on vacation for a week, so I haven't played in a week. And then... Uh, I cut, I like I had a, I ended my vacation a little short because I I heard we were gonna play against these guys and I really wanted to uh, I really wanted to smash out in uh, Kizno and like show them that you know who really who really carried lit through promotion so Fair enough. <laughs> but just just for fun though uh, yeah <laughs> good stuff love to hear it it's always good to uh, to see that kind of uh, rivalry in ACL. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, especially with X-Team dates, it, it can be really, really fun. And also looking uh, or talking about X-Teammates, the teammates that you've played with, and all the other players that are the, the really strong here over in the ACL, are you feeling like right now you guys are stepping into that favorite spot in the ACL, or do you still think that you're maybe one step behind the likes of TFT, maybe? Um, uh, uh, well, personally, I kind of like being the underdog always. Um, it's kind of my comfort. I like always being okay. doubted. It's uh, really fun. So uh, I'll probably put us just below everybody. Like, you know, I, I like it when people predict against us. Okay. It's fun to prove people wrong. Uh, but if you really ask me, like, where do I think we rank? I, I think we're just probably number one. Uh, if we're playing what we want to play and we're playing how uh, hot on the day, then I, I think we could be anybody in the league. Good stuff. That's the more classic yeah. answer. I don't think I've ever yeah, yeah, heard yeah. on one of these interviews. Uh, yeah, I think we're lower than everybody. <laughs> if, uh, if be. So that would be an interesting one. We'll quote that when we can. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about next round here before we close on out. Uh, the uh, matchup you're going to play against next, well, I guess it's next week on the December 1st when we come back from yeah. break. Uh, it will be the winner of Mirage Alliance Developmental taking on Clown Gaming. They're going to start their series off late tonight. I think it actually might just be starting right around now. Uh, any thoughts on that matchup? Any thoughts on those squads who you'd rather face or who you are uh, who you think is going to be able to take it and, and come against you guys next week? Um, who's? I don't know personally who's on Clown Gaming, but I know that Munchie is on. Uh, Munchie that is, is on correct. The, yeah. Clown Gaming is Boil the Oil, Excelsis, Debonair, Zev, Cryogen. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't have any. I don't really. Yeah, I think I would rather just play against mm -hmm. Munchie because I would like to play against Drax or mid. I don't know how good this guy is. He, he talks a lot of stuff and he says he's really good. So, and then also <laughs> like Beanie Munchie again. Okay. I love Beanie Munchie. Uh, it's, it's super fun to play against him. So, I'd probably like to play against. Uh, the Mirage team. I think we definitely can uh, 2 0 whoever we play, though. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, I think that's going to about do it for our time here tonight. Want to give the last word to you, messages. Uh, anything you want to shout out? Anything you want to say to those who are tuned on in for your match tonight? Uh, shout out my girlfriend. Uh, and then to shout out my. Uh, my teammates, I think they all played pretty good. And, uh, you know, a shout out, for, uh, shout out to Kizno and Sajed for being super free. All right. Love it to hear. <laughs> thanks so much for your time here, Messages. And thanks to everybody at home for tuning on in. Want to give one more word from Coachify. Remember, everybody, Coachify is a commission-free esports coaching platform currently in open beta. You can become a coach today. You can track your students, inspire them to succeed, and turn your passion into a career. Check out the panel located below the stream. See their website for more information. We appreciate you guys tuning in to tonight's broadcast of the Aegis Champions League. Thank you very much for myself from TDS and from Caddy on production. We're going to be taking a break here. Still TBD about this Friday, but otherwise we will be back on December 1st with the next round of playoffs. So enjoy your Thanksgiving. Enjoy some time off. We will see you once we are back. So
Thank you. 